Now we have all the entity framework going, we need to link in this print page with the database and start committing all of these things to the entity framework database. There's quite a few layers here. So there's the overall actions print page. This has a list of actions and the list of actions can have a list of print settings, which one of which can be selected. And then inside that settings, we also have a list of the printers by paper size. So there's like three or four tables we need to add to this database. The first step we need to do is take a look at each view model and make an associated data model from it. They're normally almost identical, but they will have slight differences. So you can see we have these things that are on data models, these three here, and this one is directly a data model. So I'm just going to make a new folder and separate the data from the data models, to be honest, just because we don't want to struggle identifying which is which. We can then change the namespace to data models and let's just build because that's going to error out in a few places now so control dot will fix the missing namespaces and that's that fixed so now we want a new data model let's start with the top level view which because we've renamed these now it's nice and easy to see the actions page view model is the overall actions page then it has a tab inside called print view model so this first top level we want to now make a database table for this is where you have the job name description and so on so if we just run so you can see this is this top level here so obviously we have items inside now there's multiple so you can select between them so there's going to be somewhere where there's a list of these if we can't remember we can search inside and you can see here we have the list of them and this is hosted in the actions page view model itself but we don't commit this to the database yet we want to commit the actual view model here and because a database entry is a list by default by adding this view model as a data model to entity framework it's going to become a list anyway so you'll see how this works We'll start by adding a new class and we'll call it again we're going to keep the naming convention identical so this would be the actions tab print data model so you can either do that or you could do just print data model for simplicity for now i'm going to go with the exact same naming convention just with data model instead of view model inside here you can see we have this new id we're going to copy this for now this is again just for simplicity until we decide to make custom functions in the database so every single item in a database really need the id that's the starting point and then from there you can see the other ones are just properties nothing special and default values we can set max lengths so the database has limits on strings so we want to take the actions tab print view model and pretty much look at all these entries and see what needs to be in the database i'll just start by copying everything over go to the data model paste in we're going to delete all of the attributes and then we're going to look at things like has changed as a calculated property so that's not in the database uh, is new item won't be relevant because when it's committed to the database it's always not new it's actually committed definitely want the job name we want the description we want the print drawing range and the exclusion list Titles pre-calculated, so we get rid of that. We want to keep the whitelist. Whether to print models, whether to print drawings. And then we've got the printer profile ID. Now I think this is named wrong because that's referring to this ID here, which is a printer settings when we renamed it. So if we just look up the printer profile ID, and see it goes to the selected print list item printer profiles so we still called them printer profiles but they are print settings view models so we need to rename printer profiles to printer settings and that's in the actions page view model so that's in the top level printer profiles will come from the private entry up here so here's the printer profiles we'll just f2 and rename this to printer settings so that now makes more sense this can then be printer settings ID. And what we can also do in Entity Framework is have another property. 
which is the actual printer settings item. So that would then be printer settings, and we haven't made it yet, called data model. And we'll see how this works, and it will automatically fetch this element from the database if we do the query right to pull in the full uh, data model that's linked. So for now, we'll just leave it commented out. And then we want to change all these privates to publics. And with that, let's just build because we've done a rename. So there's probably going to be errors now. Yep, so everywhere there's printer profiles now, it should be printer settings. It hasn't picked up and renamed that for us. So we're just going to have to go through and replace all these. And I guess if we put a bit more thought into the naming convention when we first did this, we wouldn't have to refactor this. But at the time when there were so many pages and names, that's just what you do. You name it what you think's right at the time, and then you can just refactor later. So that should now compile. Oh, two more. That's inside the views, which is, where is it? There. Printer settings. And one more. Is. Oh, I think that's just two errors for one item. And there we go. So let's just check if this still runs and behaves as normal. So this still pops up. We can still get into here. And still delete. Add new. Yep, so it all seems to be okay. That hasn't broken anything. We now have a data model for this, what you see here, this top level. So the job name description. You go into here, job name description, all this lot. We haven't added it to the database yet but we'll make all the data models first. So this model, as we saw, can have a print settings data model that we need to make. So let's do that one next, and then we can uncheck this. So we'll do a data model new, call it printer settings. Now it wants to match the view model, but it should do, so it's print settings, not printer settings. So print settings data model does seem to match. Copy the ID again. And then we'll go to print settings view model, do the same, copy and paste everything for now. Close all these tabs, there's a few too many open. Print settings, there we go. Paste in, delete the attributes. The constructor was setting default values, which is not relevant at all for the data model. Neither is the constructor. And neither is the design time data. Get rid of the ID, capitalize all these, change them to public. And now printer settings is correct. This is now a list of printer settings. We don't want an observable collection because this is a database entry. It's not an observable collection, it's a list. And this is a printer settings profile the data model and we haven't made this one either so what this one is is the inner list of paper sizes so where we had a4 and you drop down and find the real printer data this is that so let's just comment that out a moment because we don't have it and if we run so i can show you what this part is this printer settings so you don't get confused this print settings data model is this here when we click edit it's this page here, but we have the name, description, copies, and then these elements are now a list inside of these. So it's actually gonna be another database table because anytime there's a list of elements, it's another table. So what we now need is this database entry, which is this printer settings profile data model. So this is here, this is a profile. So there'll be a list of all these contained inside of one of these print settings. So if we then make another data model, and this one now wants to match whatever this is, which should be print settings profile data model, which matches this view model. So I think you get the idea now. We're pretty much going down the tree of view models and making data models from them. Now in here, we should be able to uncomment this, have a list, and now we have this data model, I think, complete and ready. So we have the list of items, 
each of these items will have a link back up to this printer settings data model. So what we will do is have a public string inside of here, as well as the ID for this. Each one of these will belong to one top level print settings data model. So we can have somewhere in there, print settings data model ID. And that will link us to one of these and it has to have that. That's gonna be a required value that links to a real entry in the database. On top of that added parent, we could then also do, which is what we mentioned before, we can actually have a print settings data model and do this. And because this is not knowable, we'll just have to new up a blank model. But this won't ever be created by just pulling a constructor. This will be fetched from the database. So this will never be null in essence. And we'll see how this works with the entity framework database linking when we get to it. But what we do is we would pull an ID and this will automatically fill in with the data as well when we do the binding correct. So now we've got to do the printer settings profile view model, printer settings profile view model. And we want to copy all these properties. We've done the ID. So we'll copy everything else, come into here, paste in, and again, go through deleting all the attributes and then observing what entries in here we want to keep and what aren't committed, they're just purely view models. So starting at the top, a key value pair of printer name. This is gonna cause a slight problem again because now we're gonna have another database entry if we wanted to do this. And we don't really want to have yet another database table just to be storing printer names, especially when they can change all the time. So a little trick here, if we can get rid of key value pair, we'll store a string, we'll call it printer name, and we could call it something like printer name. And instead of storing, for example, zero and default we can do a string calculation and say it was this value you could do zero and then something here and all we do is find the first index of a comma and then pass the first value as the key and everything else as the name so once we fetch from the database and convert the data model to a view model we can do that parsing it's a simple bit of code and it saves us having another level of database tables you don't want to be making your database more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, printer name though, then suggests that it's just a printer name. So you want to say printer name or printer ID and name maybe. Or you can say printer name with ID. And then that's a little bit more obvious that it's actually got, you know, a name and an ID. Type you want to keep. And again, just get rid of the default values. Make all these public before we forget that step. A lot of these are the dropdowns, so the options, for example. We don't need any options because they are fetched live and they are a view model only thing. So delete both options. Uh, orientation options again, delete that. Source tray options and drawing color options. And if we want to fetch these from a service, it wouldn't be long in the database. It would still be a different service. So we'd probably have uh, a service in here for maybe this printer service where we get available printers. We could say, you know, get drawing color options, and that could choose whether to pull them from the database or whether these are static values. We don't really need to commit these to the database of the dynamic options. So we'll come to that separately. The width and height are definitely staying. Key value pair again for paper size. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to change this to a string. That's a paper size with ID. Same for all these. So we have the string again, instead of key value pairs, they're all the same principle. And we're doing this simply because these values are not really big enough to ever grow to really want a database table. There's absolutely no benefit to adding these to separate tables. They're too small of an option to ever really need the database table.
and that's all the values copy and pasted over we'd added this property that can link back up to the parent we've made these have with ids which i actually forgot to tag in and i think that is it for there so if we run this again let's see what data models are left so we have this top level one which will be effectively this list as well it will come from this list it will make all of these entries the blacklist here is again just a parsable string because it's small so this isn't a table it's just a list of strings all in a single string field we've got this list now which is the print settings data view model when we open it up that's the print settings data view model and this is the print settings profile data view model this is the print settings data model and this table here, this list, is the print settings profile data model. These drop downs are dynamic, so we'll calculate them separately. And then the stored values, we don't even need the key to be honest. There is no benefit to a key on the drop down. So we might not even want with key because we only did the key for the sorting options. So to be honest, paper, print a name with ID doesn't matter. We don't even need the ID or paper size, we're forgetting that we added the ID to make it suitable for the view model to filter and sort these things and separate them. Whereas we really only care about the name. So that's actually something that we forgot about. So these will literally just be the strings of the printer name, paper size, orientation. We don't store the key. And then is there anything left? Have we done all the data models? I believe we have. So with that, we have the actions, tab print data model which is the top level that contains the print settings that contains the printer settings data model which is still named printer profile id here as well so this wants to be printer settings id i think we renamed the data model yeah we renamed the data model one but we forgot to rename the view model that causes the link into then the printer settings view model the printer settings view model then contains the printer settings profile view model and nothing else so that then takes us to the same here this contains the printer settings profile data model instead of view model and that links with this so i think that's the whole chain the next step will be to take all these data models and add them to the actual application context in here and there's going to be a bit of configuring to make sure we bind all these tables together now because unlike the settings these tables all link to each other we need to make sure that for example the printer settings profile data model this should not be able to exist if it doesn't have a parent so this parent is a requirement if we were to delete the parent we want to also delete all the child items in that list because they can't live without the parent so we have to make sure all these database IDs and bindings are correct for this to work. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next.